recruit a note taker because we um, didn't have anybody volunteer to take notes in the last meeting because there are a bunch of people who weren't sure if they could make it. Uh, I can take notes if you want. Yeah, perfect. Ten. Okay. Oh, may I have the link to the notes? I can find them. Right it now. Uh, looks like Eric just put it in Thank you. chat. Thank you, Eric. It's on top of things as usual. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's. Uh, so before we do last week's action items, um, let's actually start with. Uh, let's start with a different a different one. I'm going to start with the open source leadership summit. And um, so two things around that. One are, are there any things that we need to talk about in this meeting about what's happening at the Open Source Leadership Summit? And second, um, should we cancel this meeting since so many of us are going to be at the Open Source Leadership Summit? I'm sort of, I'm sort of leaning towards just canceling next week. But what, what are people's thoughts on that? I was probably gonna cancel the community call just because it's on Tuesday, just for that very reason. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't know about all of you, but when I when I go to a conference, the last thing I'm going to do is call into all of my weekly meetings, because at that yes. point, I might as well have just stayed home. Yeah, right on. And not gone to the conference. Right. That is truth. Okay, so we will cancel, cancel next week's meeting. Done. Okay, so let's go back to uh, last week's action items. Um, don't should, yeah. should spend one cent a reminder to the mailing list in terms there's no meeting? Uh, yes, yes, we should. Um, you can give me that action item if you want, unless someone else wants to take it. Anybody else want, want it? Okay, I'm happy to, I'm happy to send them. Or actually, Matt, do you want to do it since you're going to cancel the other meetings too? Yeah, I can just do it all in one fail swoop. Okay, perfect. Uh, I can speak for the growth maturity and decline group that we would also cancel next week. And then common doesn't even occur next week. So that's it. Uh, correct. Yeah, because we're meeting this week. Yep. Cool. I'll do it. Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you. Yep. One less thing for me to do. I'm not going to object. <laughs> that's right. One more thing for me to do. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to have to do it anyways. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> Um, okay, so backing up to last week's action items. So Sarah, you were going to send a biweekly reminder of issues yeah. that we want to help with. Yeah, and I, um, I'm going to. I saw that you flagged a few for a newcomer last week, or maybe over the weekend. I can't remember mm -hmm. when I saw that come in. So I was just going to go through after this call today and see if there's any others we want to flag that are really good first, um, easy ways to get involved, and then I'll send it out every other Monday. Okay, perfect. So I'll send that out today. That sounds good. And I would say anybody, anybody else on this call, if you have a few minutes and want to run through the issues and mm -hmm. tag any as good first issues, that would be, that would be great. Um, taking a first stab at defining any of the metrics, those are all good first issues, for example. Mm -hmm. Those are most of the, mostly the ones that I tagged. Did you yep. have something, Langdon? Yeah, sorry. I just was wondering if uh, we could go sooner rather than later. Um, because I have to leave in about 20 minutes. Okay. I tell you what, let's, uh, let's come back quick. to the action items and we'll do the updates on the Red Hat Boston, Uni Boston University DNI interns. Let's go ahead and you can do your update right. and then, then you'll be done. Um, all right, Manny can take it away. So hi guys. So, um, so we recently hired uh, three student interns to work on the project that we've kind of been talking to you guys about uh, for the past couple weeks. Uh, today we got them like started and like onboarded and we're kind of, you know, we're getting them to like look into like the chaos project, look at the metrics you guys are collecting and kind of un like understand why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, so like, I guess like from a, like a baseline, like that's the update for you guys. Um, let's see. Yeah. LinkedIn, is there anything else? Yeah, the big uh, kicker is uh, next week is spring break. Um, so we're basically going to give them background work to do this week, and then uh, they'll all be gone. 
excuse me, and then um, we'll uh, really hopefully get started the week after next. That's pretty good timing anyway, since most of us will be at the Open Source Leadership Summit anyways and distracted with other things. Yeah, I'm just feeling the end of the semester coming up very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, anything else on the interns or any, any questions? Well, I mean, not, no, not, not, not at the moment. No. I guess I have a question kind of for both of you, which is how, so you're going to, it sounds like you're kind of orienting them in the next week or so. Um, how do you, outside of just connecting with these calls, is there other ways that you want to connect them? Do you want, you know, if, if they're not there very long, should we be more proactive than just the calls, perhaps? Oh, right. So um, I guess like they're not currently like, on this call, but uh, we've been like, oh, so today I, I just spoke to them about like an hour ago and I pretty much kind of gave them a bunch of resources like about chaos and like about just like diversity and inclusion in general. And like they've pretty much started like orienting themselves this week. And like we're going to like keep talking to them throughout the week to kind of get them more on board um, like, as the week goes on. Um, I guess like as they start getting more and more into the work, they'll probably start coming to these meetings because like as they start like looking at like what metrics to collect and like how to look at like diversity and inclusion, they'll probably need insights from just Langdon and I. So like they'll probably come here more often in the coming weeks. Okay, I'm just, and these interns are around for how long? Uh, so they'll be here from now until the end of the semester possibly summer and then also like the next coming school year. So it's like, it, 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 uh, we're kind of, we have them based on semester just because if someone graduates, they can kind of go. But like, we have two people that will not be graduating this year. So okay. like, they'll probably be back in the fall or during the summer. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm, it, as the semester comes to a, a close quickly, we're basically halfway through. I just, I think sometimes the learning curve on these things can be pretty steep for students mm -hmm. having been through the Google Summer of Code stuff. And so if there's any ways that you can think that they could connect faster to help lower that curve, particularly if they're going to be using technologies, like, you know, uh, to take a look at some of the DNI metrics, you know, if they're going to connect with Grimoire Lab or Augur to, to look at some of these DNI metrics, that's going to take some time to get their head around what the metrics are. That's gonna take some time. That's all. Yeah, yeah, no, um, so I'm connecting with the, I'm connecting with Sean actually from Augur so that I could kind of talk to him about like the project and kind of figure out the best way to kind of get our student interns like, like integrated like as quickly as possible. Okay. And I sent so you can, some, like, start working. I sent okay. you some stuff yeah. this morning, uh, Manny. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you. You can, sh you can share that all with the interns. Okay, yeah. okay. awesome, thank you. Yeah, I, I, we we definitely feel your your uh, stressor um, of kind of getting everybody up to speed quickly. Um, you know, but a little bit is uh, thank you for the offer, and let's see how they get started, and then like revise from there. Sounds um, good. Yeah, our current plan. Okay. Yeah, and we're we're a pretty friendly bunch, so if they have questions, there's there's always the the mailing lists. They're a little more friendly maybe than some other open source projects. So. perhaps. Inclusive, maybe <laughs> yes. Um, so if they have if they have any questions between meetings or whatever, you know, really, really encourage them to reach out because you know we're happy to help in any way we can. Sure, sounds good. Yeah, Thank well, you. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the action items. Um, so Georg, Ge oh, can't Georg. talk today. Georg is starting conversations on topics that bleed over from the weekly call. So this is ongoing. Garrick has it on his agenda. He's been working on that. Um, Matt and Kevin, website issue number 118, which I'm just clicking on, the email list descriptions on the participate page. Um, I have not touched that. Kevin, okay. have you? Uh, I, was, I was peeking at it yesterday. Uh, I'm going to uh, the uh, the second module down. I think the uh, I think from a 
design standpoint, I think we were talking about removing that second module and kind of merging it with the top one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then because the, the wiki is uh, going already gone, I guess, uh, I'm going to move the email archives down to the space that the, uh, the, the wiki holds currently. Uh, and I can, uh, I will peek at that uh, later on this evening. I can probably make those changes pretty fast. All right. Cool. Yep. Cool. Let us know if you want feedback on anything or if you want any, any help or suggestions. Certainly. Yep. I know that there is some, there is some conversation uh, in the issues between uh, Georg and myself currently uh, okay. and would certainly welcome uh, any, any further conversation. Cool. Well, and I think too, once you get the structural bit kind of figured out and, and done that we can always, we can always tweak the text later. Oh, definitely. Cool. Um, Sarah, you were going to set up a meeting with, with Hyperledger and Chaos DNI at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Yes, and I'm targeting, it looks like Wednesday afternoon is going to work fairly good. So I will get out an email today to try to get that locked down with the people on the the Hyperledger end, and it looked like that was open in terms of no one um, on this call, I don't believe, is t uh, talking at that window. So I think that would be a good option. But oh. Okay, that sounds good to me. And is that is that meeting with, uh, I think Salona is going to be there. Is that a meeting with her? Yeah, yeah. it would be Salona, Jamie Smith, um, Brian would be invited, and then I'd also invite Rye and David Boswell, but I I know Rye is not going to be there in person, and I'm not sure about David Boswell. So if we are able to include them by phone, great. If not, we can always report out to them. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. Sure. Um, Daniel, reaching out to Uber and inviting them. Yeah. Um, so my first question was, when are we having this meeting? Because I was thinking about this before, but I didn't know about this. So. Um, so are these, let me, let me just clarify, it's, are these two separate meetings or are we inviting Uber to the Hyperledger meeting? My, my idea was that we were going to have a meeting, the Chaos DNI group, uh, but so the, the Hyperlayer uh, meeting was for how we can help Hyperlayer with the DNI metrics and so on. Right. And then I thought that we were going to have another meeting, all of us together, were kind of discussing more. Uh, general things and then I wanted to invite Uber people to this meeting because then they can be introduced from the very beginning uh, but I don't know what you think or if we were going to have all of these meetings coffee time works as well I think they should be separate but that would be my recommendation yeah I think so well I think um, buried in there is also the question of should we try to get a DNI kind of a DNI meetup sometime at the um, at the Open Source Leadership Summit. And if, if so, we can obviously invite uh, Uber to that meeting. Yeah. Are there gonna be birds of a feather session or like those whiteboard sessions available? Let me check with my events team, uh, a mm -hmm. contact that I work with. I think they're, I know they've done it typically, so I don't know why yeah. they went this year, but let me. Have they done them at the Leadership Summit or just at the other conferences? Well, we did it at Leadership Summit. Yeah, they have done it at okay. Leadership Summit. Okay, cool. Actually, Chaos kicked off at one of those. Mm -hmm. That was how it came to be. Oh. It was a birds of a feather session. Cool. On a whiteboard, yep. I remember that. Then, uh, Sarah, are you checking with the Linux Foundation team if there are some bugs. If so, then we can apply for them probably. I will, I just, I'm sending a note right now to see if there's the, these birds of a feather whiteboard sessions that we could um, leverage for a meetup. Okay, perfect. Cool. Um, the next one, create a pull request to add people who contributed at ChaosCon as contributors. And I saw that pull request. Um, the question I had about it was, do we, do we need or want to get people's permission to add them to that list? Should we check with those people first? Have we already done that? Um, as far as I remember, we were asking for this permission during the chaos con, because indeed okay. we, we asked them if you remember about this, like mm -hmm. hey, you add your name here, you will be tracked as contributor. 
my only my only problem here when I was going through all of the people is that I didn't have the GitHub account for all of them, and I I even had uh, 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 this small information as the name is Lars, but uh, I didn't know Lars, so I don't know who they are. So I simply yeah. add Lars. But I worked with Lars and I didn't catch his last name. Uh, <laughs> but the pull request should, is there. Is uh, it, should he have been registered? If he was registered for Chaos Con, do we have access to that list. Mm, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, Manrique should have that. Uh, yeah, I will, I will check this because I, I have access to this. Okay. Um, okay, so there, yeah, there are a couple that we don't have hmm. uh, Twitter accounts for. I bet I could find Jack Mc, Jeff McAffer because he's at Microsoft. Oh, I know Jeff. Yeah, you're right. In some other cases, I, I didn't remember the, the face of the people, so it was like, uh, I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jeff McAffer is just Jeff McAffer on GitHub. I'll, uh... Um, all right, so I would say that those of us that were at the summit or the, sorry, ChaosCon should go through and look at some of the names and see if we can get the uh, GitHub accounts. Because I don't remember that as being part of the, um, it might be on registration. We should, uh, we should check. Um, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll wait. Uh, let's wait to merge that until we get uh, till we sort out just a couple more of the, at least the, the obvious ones that we can find, like Jeff, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then we can merge it later this week. Any other questions on that pull request? No. Um, Sarah, you were going to confirm with everyone that the switch from Daniel to Jamie for the Open Source Leadership Summit panel, and I think that's done, right? It is yeah and it's been reflected on the website too and thank you for um that uh, opportunity danielle and i think i believe nicole still invited you to the prep call and we very much welcome you know any and all input and thoughts and advice or suggestions you have to help us you know do the best we can with that panel oh, yeah of course i mean uh jimmy seems to be awesome so <laughs> more than happy that that she's around great thank you yeah, and just to chime in there, um, yeah, we welcome your input, uh, Danielle, and um, we're, we're hoping, um, so Sarah and I were talking about in the background here, we're, we're hoping that um, Georg might be able to speak to some of the data that you can bring forth, right, um, so that we can include that in the panel. Yep. If Georg agrees, I'm <laughs> happy. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And we uh, we do have a planning call later today that Nicole scheduled. Okay. Uh, cool. So it looks like the next few are done as well. So uh, the planning meeting is later today. Yeah. Um, and Nicole, I saw you yes. sent an email to the Chaos mailing list to start the review process for the README doc. Which is awesome. Yeah. And then the next one I assume is ongoing since we're still getting feedback. Yeah. Okay. Um met I wow, I don't understand this agenda item. Metrics around pull request. Right. Sorry. <clears throat> so um LinkedIn and I and some of other people have been working on like figuring out um because like the the one of the, the two metrics that we're focusing on or at least the two categories that we're focusing on are pull request and like like the amount of comments you have or like <clears throat> i guess like you pull up the document we wrote up so we're looking at like pull requests we're looking at like like the number of pull requests looking at like the content of the comments sentiment of the comments close slash merge rate the author the reviewers 
like the commenters on that. And we kind of wanted to kind of, cause like uh, we were looking at the chaos metrics around like, like contribution type and whatnot. <laughs> and we kind of wanted to kind of merge what we're working on and kind of make a PR to the, the, the working group GitHub. But I guess um, we really couldn't find a way to kind of take what we have and add it without like moving a lot of things around. So we just kind of wanted to talk about the, the way the metrics are currently kind of outlined and mm -hmm. maybe how we can best fit in or uh, if there's like a possible change in structure that needs to happen. Um, that's why I wrote, wrote that on there. Okay, no, that's great. Um, my, first, my first thought about that is that maybe it doesn't necessarily belong in um, DNI because we also have a common metrics working group, which is all the metrics that are sort of common to um, other things like growth maturity and decline, risk, um, or ones that don't ne neatly fit into any of the particular groups. So we actually mm -hmm. have a, there's a slash metrics repository, which has some of the things that you mentioned in it. And I'm curious if you've, if you've looked much at that repository. No, I've, I've been primarily working off of, I guess, um, the DNI work, like work group uh, metrics. So that's kind of where we're, fo uh, we're like, our focus is, um, yeah, I'm looking at metrics right now. Yeah, we, we, we did actually look at the metrics one. Um, mm -hmm. the, the thing, what it looks like is that the DNI ones are kind of pulled up flat at the same level as um, all the rest of the metrics, kind of. Um, and it was a little unclear to us where the relationship worked um, between like kind of the overall, and now I'm talking with my hands, hopefully you guys can see me. But, <laughs> With the overall uh, like kind of chaos metrics versus the DNI metrics, like I said, some of them seem to have gotten pulled up kind of flat rather than it being almost like a subcategory. So mm -hmm. it was a little unclear, I think, to us about how um, it was intended to work. Um, you know, so I think the uh, the flip side of the conversation is that it's hard to explain. I think a little bit what we mean. So that's why we were uh, thinking about putting together um, what we're what we were thinking and then kind of show it and then say, okay, now, now comment. Um, because talking about it in the abstracts is tough. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, you're in, you're in good company and not understanding exactly how things are structured because we, we formed this common metrics working group just, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago to try to work on this problem because the, the metrics repository right now is completely flat. There are no focus areas where, um, and I think, have you been in any of those calls, Langdon? I don't remember. I don't think so. Okay. Um, because we do have one on, on Thursday. And so the, the two focus areas that we've kind of identified so far have been around um, organizational affiliation. And then there's another one around uh, responsiveness metrics. So how long does it take to, you know, whatever. Um, and I wonder if we, I wonder if we need one a focus area around the stuff that, that you're talking about. Do you have, do you have like a Google doc or a, something you can shoot off in an email to the list that we can start to kind of chew on a little bit? Yeah, we have, we have a write up that I'm not sure is necessarily what I would send to the list to get commentary on. Like mm -hmm. I, you know, we could, we could share it in here and it would be fine. Um, but it would need to be, like rejiggered a bit to make something that people would comment on. But I think that's a good idea is the, the probably if, if there's recognition that we're not the only ones confused, um, then I think that the question makes sense. Um, and we could send out, you know, kind of, as you say, send that out to the list and kind of ask yeah. the question. Um, I think what we were, we weren't sure if we just weren't getting it. Yeah, no, we, we haven't quite solved this problem because the, the, the other working groups have focus areas and the, the metrics repository, um, yeah, it's, it's in flux right now. Um, so that's a, okay. that's a really good, that's a really good point. Um, if you wanted the, the meeting, uh, the meeting is on Thursday this week. If you wanted to attend the, the common metrics working group, um, if you wanted where, to read up there, it's, it's on the, right it's on the participate page of the website and it is um, roughly at this time on Thursday. So. All right. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Um, 
I don't know what I have for conflicts at the moment. Okay. Um, but uh, let me figure it out. Cool. Okay. Um, so, so I guess so. The pull, so the pull request kind of goes towards more of the general metrics as opposed to the DNI uh, metrics. That's my that's my guess based on the way that you described okay. it. Um, okay, when we cool. when we have a look at the details, maybe maybe we'll change our minds. I'm not I'm okay. not sure. Kind of depends, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and then I guess something else that we were we also had was um, we are also looking at. Wow. Okay, sorry, I just got locked out. Uh, we're also looking at, like, I guess, sentiment of the comments. So is that still something that fits into the um, metrics working group, or is that something? Because I know on the DN on the DNI uh, repository, there is a, um, you guys are looking at, oh, I moved out too far. You guys are you guys have something about, like, um, communication, uh, sorry, sorry uh, contribution sentiment, so mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So does, would that kind of fit there or um, we're still trying to figure that out as well. When I, I can't, I'm, we're certainly doing that kind of work uh, with, with Augur because toxicity and open source communication is a recognized issue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we haven't, I don't think that, I think it's been discussed mostly in the diversity and inclusion group to date. Mm -hmm. I'm, at least those are the discussions I've been in about toxic communication. So I don't know if, Don, I mean, you kind of span common and DNI more so than I do. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we'd have to look at the, the details, but um, we do consider a lot of the sentiment stuff to be around um, diversity and inclusion just because it has such a big impact on inclusivity within a community. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about um, communication channels and how easy are they to participate in, um, contribution sentiment, um, Things, things around that. I think we have a communication section that, that has houses some of some of those types of things. So a lot of those do sit in the um, in the DNI working group, but it depends. It depends a lot. So this this is what we're realizing is that there's there's an awful lot of overlap because there are things that um, metrics that really do impact across potentially across multiple working groups that. You know, at the at the end of the day, they they might be used for diversity and inclusion metrics. They might be used for for other types of metrics. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a. We're still trying to figure that out. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and then I guess so while we're since we're still talking about well, well, on this topic, like the next mm -hmm. thing I added for the meeting was because we also wanted to look at like the um the communication channels and the sentiment in those channels so i guess something you really you, you just kind of brought up um so we're also trying to figure out how we can fit into there as well but um but i see yeah mm. we could um you know there's a working group that's kind of focused on an academic paper that i might be able to connect you with because we've been wrestling with using machine learning and different kinds of technologies to detect toxicity. And it's a trickier problem than, mm -hmm. than you might think, mostly because um, it's like if somebody shows up with a contagion, <laughs> you know, they infect everyone and then everyone dies or leaves, but it's just that one instance. And so there's a very low end of toxic communication. It just has this disastrous effect. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's a challenge for most of the approaches that we use to detect things that are going to be impactful. Um, but there's a lot of work out there. I, I could go, I could show you, I could show you what we found so far, if that's helpful. Yes, that'd be very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. And if there, if you notice that there are some metrics that you think are missing within that focus area, um, uh, let us know. And, and we also could use your help in, in defining some of those metrics because not all of them are well defined and some of them we've some we have placeholders, some of them we have a little a little information. Um, mm -hmm. So those are those are good places to to contribute for sure. And then if you have any questions, we can we can chat about them. most of the most of the pages for the focus areas that are not yet kind of well defined. A lot of those have issues attached to them. So if you okay. search in the if you search in the issues, you'll see um, 
issues related to things like, um, I think there's one for uh, contribution sentiment for that focus area. So that might be a good place if it's, if it's kind of related to a specific metric or a specific area, we can have some of those discussions and issues too, if that's easier. Okay, so, yeah, so, that's good. yeah, so I think what I'll, I'll make a part of like my duty this week is like I'll try my best or our best to take what we've written up in the past week and see how we can integrate it into what you guys have. And I'll, I'll make a PR and we can discuss it the next time we meet um, as a working group. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming and for all, all your participation. It's been great. <coughs> Do we have any other agenda items? Um, for me. Okay, I do. I do have one more. I think let's let's determine the March eighteenth meeting facilitator and note taker, and then um, I do want to chat just quickly about the since we have some time left about the um, diversity panel at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Since I can't actually make Nicole's meeting today. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> because I have a conflict, <laughs> but I think we're gonna have time, so I can at least quickly sync up with you. Um, Good. So let's, yeah. let's, all right, let's start with uh, the March 18th meeting facilitator. Would someone like to facilitate? Are we, did we decide, are we um, skipping um, next week and is this for the following week? Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're going to skip all of the chaos um, meetings the week of the 11th. Yep. Since so many of us will be gone. And so this will be for the 18th. Yeah, and I can be note taker on the 18th. Perfect. Put in a reminder to send out the reminder <laughs> because uh, I think I I think I might have been remiss in doing that one week too when I was a note taker. Oh no, that's okay because the note taker doesn't have to send out the reminder. Oh, the facilitator, okay. facilitator, sends out the reminder. Okay. Yeah. The note taker sends out the notes after the meeting. Got it. Okay. Also important. Yes. So did we have a volunteer for facilitator? So I want to tentatively volunteer, but I've got to go check with um, uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I need to go check to make sure my morning is covered, but okay. I'd love to tentatively volunteer. Okay, we'll put you down as a tentative facilitator. And then if you can't facilitate, if you could just drop us a note in the, um, in the, the mailing list and one of us can step up and, and do it instead. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so next on the agenda, we're going to talk about the the panel for the DNI panel at um, Open Source Leadership Summit. So everybody is welcome to stay. Um, if you're not interested in that particular topic, you can you can drop off to if you want your 25 minutes back. Uh, I won't be on the panel, so I will see y'all later. <laughs> see you, Sean. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you at the Leadership Summit. I just won't panel Great. it up. <laughs> All right. See you next week. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, hold on a second. Do you do you want me to continue recording this? Um. I would say. Uh. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no harm in recording it. I don't think. Uh, uh, yeah. That'd be good. I'm not sure if I if I drop off. I think it stops recording. Okay. If you need to drop uh, off and it stops recording, it's not a big deal. I don't, I don't need to, though. Deal. It's just if uh, it's your choice. I can continue recording or, or stop it. I don't have a preference. Does anybody have a preference? Mm -hmm. I have a preference. Okay. Okay. No preference. Um, okay, Nicole. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you drive. Oh, awesome. Okay. So my first question is going to be, any any thoughts for how to um, facilitate a discussion in thirty minutes with uh, what what do we have five speakers to your to your point, Don? No, in all in all seriousness, so um, um, I think that we what I'd like to do is to find our unique voices within this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so that we each have something unique that we talk about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And my, my advice on facilitating a very short panel with this many people is, because um, I, was, I was thinking about this a little bit earlier, I, one of the things that you can do is have a slide that has all of our kind of details. So, my, you know, name, title, where we work, and don't let people introduce themselves. Right. Because if you do that, that will take the entire 30 minutes because uh, in general, we can't shut up about ourselves. So nobody will, we'll just never get anywhere. So I would, I would skip the introductions entirely and have like one question per panelist mm -hmm. um, with a few backup questions. And if we do like one question per panelist, we probably still have time to take questions from the audience. And then if you have some backup questions in case the audience is small shy not asking questions um that might work that's that's one idea i definitely like the slide bio skip intros idea and actually that lends itself really well to um to crafting an overall story that fits together in which each of us um, delivers a unique viewpoint or, or speaks to something, um, speaks to a unique facet of that overall story. Mm -hmm. And that would then also, from a logistics standpoint, you could then seat the folks, right? Seat each of us in that order so that and I'll kind of describe what I'm talking about so <clears throat> if if um, Danielle speaks to or, or Georg speaks to um, the data in the, in, in the community right and, and really sets the stage for the, the need if we think we you know, are still needing that, right? And then you have Dawn, and I don't want to put any words in your mouth. I'm just kind of painting an overall picture here. But, you know, if you speak to the communication within communities and some of your PhD work, right, um, and, and bring some of that in and how maybe that helps inform um, your contributions within the kiosk community. And again, I am not meaning at all to, to put um, words in anybody's mouth here. Um, so, so uh, you know, but then we have Hyperledger, right, who speaks to, or, or Sarah, maybe you speak to being a new contributor within the chaos community, what your experience was, right? And, and maybe that's a way for us to welcome additional folks into the community. Mm -hmm. And then the Hyperledger folks speak to, you know, maybe how they would get starting to get involved and how they would apply some of this to their own community. I, I don't know. But that's just kind of my overall thinking over this past week and weekend about how to to fit these pieces together. But if we if we did this as Dawn has suggested and and said, you know, we're going to skip this. I'm going to put together a slide with each of our wonderful pictures and details and bio and that, right? And then we we throw to a, a, a question each of us it then gives each of us that, um, that opportunity to, to, to provide our unique viewpoints. So let me throw that out and see what y'all think. Oh yeah, that seems really reasonable to me. I kind of like, I, I sort of like doing it as sort of a story where you have kind of an, kind of an order and take us sort of from data all the way through to example and mm -hmm. and I'm you know I'm happy to talk about the the collaboration piece um, and how you know 
I don't know, some, something around diversity and inclusion and how it relates to collaboration. I'm happy to, to mm -hmm. talk about that. I'm also, to be fair, I'm happy to talk about just about any of it. Um, <laughs> if, there's, if there's something that you feel like you have a gap that nobody's, nobody's talking about that you need to sort of complete the story, um, I'm also happy to talk about something else. So I'm not, I'm not super fussed about what I, what I talk about. I'm kind of, I'm mm -hmm. kind of passionate about the whole space. I don't have a particular story that I feel like I need to tell. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, so kind of slot me in where, wherever you want. Um, I mean, nothing crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn's going to talk about <laughs> blockchain and diversity <laughs> and inclusion. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy to talk about collaboration. I'm happy to talk about community participation. I'm happy to talk about uh, a variety of things. Whatever you need to fill the gap in the story, I'm happy to do that. I mean, the other thing that pops into my mind too, Dawn, is you've been a part of the larger open source community for so long that and, and a part of so many different communities, is there something there that you might want to talk about? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I could, if you needed, you know, I, I could talk about some of the um, kind of history and how things have changed over the past almost 20 years that I've been doing this. Um, if, if you think that would be interesting to people. I, I was going to say too, and Nicole, in terms of some of the, you know, I'm newer to this group, but I've worked on the periphery or even, you know, closely with some uh, different open source communities and, um, you know, a little bit to what Don's saying too. I've seen their, the awakening in terms of this issue and this shift in, focus and attention, you know, whether, uh, and then some com communities that I think have been very um, laser focused from almost their start, you know, working with com communities as diverse as whether it's been Linux or um, Node to Kubernetes now, you know, there's just been a range of both older, more mature, and then newer projects and, you know, mid life cycle type projects too, and um, across the LF spectrum of you know projects that we work with that i've had some of that ex thoughts and those experiences as well yeah that's great yeah, yeah. and those yeah. are those are the bits that um so Georg just joined again where uh we took a break from the um dni working group call and we're chatting about um the the panel because I can't make it to the meeting that's later today. So that's that's where we are. That's where we are now. Okay, awesome. I'm glad I rejoined. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're just talking about, uh, well, I mean, Nicole can catch you up in the meeting later. Um, the the tricky bit about about doing that, about giving kind of the, the history and how things changed is that um, it can be a little bit of a political minefield because right. you have to talk about what it was before. I know. Um, and so I'm not sure if we want to get into that given that we only have 30 minutes because, yeah. Um, yeah. I, think, I think one thing I'm noticing just newer open source projects, you know, are doing some really sort of innovative and interesting and, you know, positive things. And I was going to sort of focus more on some of the, not saying that aren't, there aren't great things happening within a, so many communities. Um, sometimes I think it's just not necessarily on the radar more than something that they're against. It's just not their most critical, you know, they're trying to just get by with getting code up out there and, you know, they're under-resourced in so many ways, you know, on other fronts. But I was going to sort of focus on the healthy examples that exist today. Yeah, which is good because there, there are loads of loads of good examples now. I mean, I work in the Kubernetes community most of the time, and um, there they take mm -hmm. code of conduct and behavior pretty pretty seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The idea of focusing the panel on good examples and where we want to go, and especially on how 
looking at the work that the DNI work group is doing can help projects or how we need more communities to try out these metrics and give us feedback and help improve the resource that we have. Don, do you see Kubernetes wanting to do like trial and be a pilot case with our group or, I mean, I know they are doing a lot of work sort of on their own. Um, I, you know, I just didn't know if, you know, maybe you're the person to try to bring them closer into the fold and there is other people I've worked with too. I didn't know if that was something you think that community would be interested in. Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, let me think about that. I can probably I can probably bring that up with a few people and see if there's if they, see if there's any interest in Kubernetes being kind of a pilot for that. Um, the problem we have right now in the Kubernetes community is just uh, resource constraints. So sure. the because the community has grown so incredibly mm -hmm. quickly that people are really starting to feel feel a bit constrained. So if, if it's yeah. something that people from the Kubernetes community would need to pick up, um, I don't, let's actually, let's go, let's come back to that. Let's, let's, okay. uh, let's ask that question again in a couple of months, because they just okay. had a really, there, we're still recovering from the, the Slack uh, spam attack. And it's, mm -hmm. there, there are some, some issues that are chewing up lots of people's bandwidth right now. Okay. And I don't want to, get off track about the panel discussion here either so sorry Nicole. oh yeah sorry oh just just in case uh we can we can invite all of these people to to the both that we are yes. having to. cool exactly and i did get note from uh, my colleague that they there will be that opportunity so um great we can sign up on site on conference style sessions so i think we'll probably just want to go and get something up there and pick a time and look a day and we can make that happen. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Races on. First one there gets us signed up. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, are, are any of you doing any of the activities on Monday? I'm signed up. On Monday. Yes. yes. One thing. Which, which I'm one? I'm not are you quite doing? sure which one we chose. I think it might be horseback riding. Uh, I, I went with what horses are you doing? because I'm allergic. Uh, I went with uh, wine, uh, wine tasting and glass blowing, which seems like a terrible combination. Nothing could possibly go wrong. But um, the two things I'm very passionate about, I really like wine and I've always been really fascinated by glass blowing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a go. Yeah, that does sound fun. Sure. We were thinking about that one too. <laughs> to really bring out the diversity, I think I'm going the bike tour. Ah, nice. It'll be, it'll be at the Open Seat Commons gathering in Santa Clara in case you want to join us. <laughs> okay, yours yeah. sounds less exciting. No, nothing yeah, personal. No. Sorry. Um, okay, uh, so Nicole, I know you, you actually have a real uh, diversity and inclusion panel planning meeting um, that isn't this one. Do you have any more questions for me before while you have me on the phone or do you think you have what you need? And then we can sync up after the meeting and you can let me know what, what you guys all decided. Yeah, no, this has been great. This, is, this has been great. This has given us a structure and yeah really helped me with where we could plug things in. So thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, just, yeah, drop me a note. And let me know what you want me to talk about. And if we need to chat about something, just let me know. We can find some time this week. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah. I'll see you all next week. Thank yeah, you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah. Have okay. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.